Welcome back to another mech deck tech. Today we have a custom deck tech for Galta and Maverin. We're looking to flood the board with as many tokens as possible to overwhelm our opponents. But before we dive on in, I notice that most of you still aren't subscribed to the channel. If you're enjoying these deck techs and upgrade guides, go ahead and tap that subscribe button to help the channel grow. Today's deck tech was requested by Lorenzi Beck. Lorenzi, you rock. With these custom deck techs, we'll be going over our aggro, defensive, and utility synergies, as well as any finishing combos found in the deck. As always, there will be a link in the description to the full deck list, but let's get started. As I mentioned at the start of the video, we're working with Galta and Maverin, so we're looking to make and be rewarded for creating tokens. Starting off the list of aggro synergies, we have Adeline Resplendent Cathar. Adeline is here to create three tokens whenever we attack, and with our go-wide strategy, their power is going to constantly be going through the roof. Ancient Imperosaurus is a powerful dinosaur fit to fight alongside Galta and Maverin. As a 6-6 with Trample and Ward 2 for 7, which can be convoked, this dinosaur comes out early and packs a huge punt, which our opponents won't be able to handle. Best Soul Nourisher is going to get beefy quick. As all of our 1 1 tokens come into play, but she isn't greedy, she shares that power with our tiny tokens, ensuring that they not only survive the onslaught we unleash, but take out some big blockers in the process. Kadria, Caller of the Small, is looking to get out early and do some chip damage to go ahead and double up our number of tokens in the form of 1 1 White Rabbits. Best is sure to be pleased to see so many new adorable faces. Champion of Lambholt is a must-have in any green token deck. They're gonna get huge fast, just like Bess, but unlike Bess, they aren't necessarily sharing all that power. But rather, they're forcing our opponents to simply not block us, allowing our massive army through the gates to hit them in the face. Galta, Primal Hunger is here, and like Ancient Imperosaurus that we saw earlier, is a big body with Trample, and gets discounted based on their current board state, Slimming down a 12-12 Trampling Dino is going to force our opponents to overcommit to blocks, letting us trade super efficiently. Myro, Shield of Argive, locks our opponents that have interacted with us on our turn and is going to let us snowball the number of soldiers we control. Don't underestimate the power of doubling. Speaking of doubling, Sapendral Hunger Dominus is here to double up our power and toughness of all of our creatures at the start of each combat allowing some of our big beefy creatures to hit for double, and allowing for some of our defensive creatures to trade more efficiently. Akrima's Will is here to offer up some evasion, double strike, and vigilance to our entire board. And if our commander is out in play, hey, we get some indestructibility, some lifelink, and the ultimate evasion, protection. Garuk's Uprising is going to grant all of our creatures trample, forcing our opponents to again overcommit to those blocks to ensure they're not taking damage. But our massive army is far more replaceable than any army that they are likely to have. With all that aggression out of the way, let's look into how we're staying alive long enough to hit this hard in the first place. Leading the pack, we have Avenger of Zendikar, who's going to create a bunch of 0-1 plants for each land we already control. And those plants are going to grow over time as we play additional lands. King Darien, 48, who has some utility qualities to him, but more importantly can sacrifice himself at no additional cost to protect all of our tokens for the turn. Heavy is the head that wears the crown, and no one knows this better than King Darien. Toski, bearer of secrets, is a powerful indestructible 1-1 which also has some utility qualities allowing us to draw a card for each creature that is dealt damage, but since they're indestructible, has earned themselves a place among the defensive ranks. King Darien really set the example for what we want our defensive cards to do, uh, and that's really just to protect our board. We have a number of ways of doing this at instant speed, including Clever Concealment, which has the added benefit of being convocable, allowing us to phase out any number of non-land targets, Phasing out just our board and not ourselves comes with the drawback of leaving ourselves open to attacks, so we definitely need to pick our targets wisely. Flawless Maneuver might just be free to cast and grants our creatures indestructible, protecting them from targeted removal and board wipes alike, leaving everyone else wide open for some much-deserved crackback. Heroic Intervention goes a step further, 
granting hexproof in addition to that indestructibility we just talked about. Rootborn Defense offers a different gift in the form of Populate, allowing us to make a copy of a token that we already control, and then offering the board Indestructible. Teferi's Protection is going to allow us and our entire board to phase out. No hard decisions need to be made, we just don't exist for a moment. Unbreakable Formation rounds our list of defensive cards and also offers indestructibility to our creatures and vigilance and a plus one plus one counter to each of those creatures if we choose to use it offensively. Now we move into our utility synergies and we're going to have a lot of them. We're looking to draw cards, generate a ton of mana, generate even more tokens, maybe even win on the spot. So how are we doing all of this? To start us off, we have a few mana dorks in the form of Abyssin's Pilgrim, Birds of Paradise, Circle of Dreams Druid, Delighted Halfling, Elvish Mystic, and Llanowar Elves, as well as Jahira, Friend of the Forest, which allows all of our tokens to tap for green mana. Benny Brax, Zoologist, is a convocable 3-2, and if we made a token on any turn, not just our own, we get to draw a card at the end step. Gallic Readers is going to get bigger over time, ramp us, keeping our life up. They're definitely an all-rounder that earned themselves a spot in this deck. Of course, what white token deck would be complete without Mondrak Glory Dominus to double up our token creation? Nesting Dovehawk is a 2-2 flyer for 4 that's going to get larger each time a creature token ETPs for us, and allows us to populate at the start of each combat on our turn. You could argue this should be an aggro, but I feel this card is in here for the populate effect, and less so for being an eventually powerful flyer. Queen Elena of Rudak is here to grant some extra soldiers when we create tokens. A little goes a long way, and she's out here supporting Myra, who we saw earlier. Reese the Redeemed is going to see us generating some tokens, right? Early on, they're going to pop out little 1-1 elf warriors, but late game, they're going to double up our tokens. Rosie Cotton of Southlane is here passing out 1-1 encounters like they're candy. Uh, with our big tramplers, including our commander, creatures like Bess and Champion as solid targets, Rosie is here putting in the work. Rumor Gather is going to offer up some card selection and card draw. We're going to be second through our deck quickly and always have the answers that we need. Scoot Swarm is a card that kind of feels like it fits all three roles, right? It's generating tokens quickly, which can act as either defenders or attackers. Swarm is literally in its name. But which category do you think this beast of a bug fits in? Torin's Fist of the Angels is granting us 1-1 soldiers for casting all of our creature spells. The fact that those tokens happen to have training is just icing on the cake. Tristani, Selesnia's voice, is keeping our life high and allows us to populate. Welcoming Vampire is going to grant us card draw when tokens ETB. This is limited to once per turn, but those turns don't have to be ours. March of the Multitudes is going to let us create an absurd number of 1-1 white soldiers with lifelink, where Rite of Harmony is going to let us draw a ton of cards as our board explodes with creatures. Second Harvest is here to double up those tokens, while Sundering Growth is going to grant us a copy of one of our tokens in the process of destroying an artifact or enchantment. Halo Fountain grants us 1-1 one, one citizen tokens, draws us cards, and, once we have enough duders on the field, has an alternate win con. Helm of the Host is here to create powerful token copies of some of our stronger creatures, letting their effects stack to devastating results. A North Procession is doubling up our token generation. Awakening Zone is creating sackable 0-1 on Drawsy Spawn that grant us some mana when we sack them off. Growing Rites of Itlamok is our budget Gaia's Cradle. It'll transform quickly and grant us a ton of mana. Legion's Landing creates us a 1-1 lifelinker for 1, but will also quickly transform and grant us access to some extra mana, as well as the ability to create more 1-1 lifelinkers. Primal Vigor is a little more on the group hug side, since it isn't limited to just us, but it does double our token generation, as well as our plus 1 plus 1 counter production. Song of the World Soul is going to let us populate every time we cast a spell. 
Lastly, we have Tribute to the World Tree, which is going to either draw us cards or beef up our tokens. So, how are we ending this game? Well, ultimately we have a few options. My personal favorite is Halo Fountain, which we've already seen. We simply swing with 15 or more creatures, spend some white mana to untap all of them, and win on the spot. A Chroma's Will is another good option to end the game immediately. Should our opponents playing a colorless deck, and regardless of you know whether or not our commander is out on the field, this is a really good way of just sort of bypassing all of your opponent's creatures and just taking them out in one shot. Champion of Lampold, of course, offers up the opportunity to do the same once I've seen enough creatures ETB. But guys, that's the deck overall. Of course, we have some mana rocks and a few other goodies that I didn't mention here, but you guys can always check out the full list in the description below. Uh, but were there cards that I didn't include that you feel like I'm kind of missing here? Were the cards that you're questioning being in the deck in the first place? Is there a commander you'd like to see a custom deck tech on? Let me know in the comments section below. And as always, good luck with your builds.